most of the world uses the metric system, America still uses English units. That's fine for everyday life, but for scientists around the world to communicate easily, we need a standard language and system of units and measurements. That system is le système international de unité, or just SI units. It means international system of units, and it includes seven base units. The five most commonly used base units are the meter, the kilogram, kelvin, seconds, and moles. We can use prefixes to make the units smaller or larger depending on what's needed. Here are some commonly used prefixes and the number they represent. Mega and kilo make numbers larger than the unit it precedes. Deci through pico make the numbers smaller than the unit it precedes. So we can put the prefix in front of the base unit to create a new sort of unit. For example, if we take the unit centi and put it in front of meter, we get a unit that is one hundredth of a meter. Or put kilo in front of a meter and it's one thousand meters long. The prefixes can be used with other units of measure like volume. If we want to know the volume of a cube, you can measure the length, the width, and the height and multiply to get volume. If a cube is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, it makes a 1,000 cubic centimeter cube, which is also called a liter. Because of the system relationship, it also holds that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. Be careful when you record volume. It's important that you record the temperature as well, because temperature can have an effect on volume, especially gases. Warmer temperatures typically increase the volume. Record the temperature when you measure volume to ensure accuracy and consistency. When measuring mass, we use grams. For larger items, we may measure in kilograms, which is a thousand grams, or for smaller things like milligrams, which is a thousandth of a gram. We use a scale or a balance to measure mass on Earth, which is different from weight. Weight is a measure of force, like the pull of Earth's gravity, and mass is a quantity of matter. Mass won't change, no matter what planet you're on, but weight will. People often confuse weight and mass, and they also confuse mass and density, for example. What weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? They actually have the same mass and the same weight on Earth. If it's a pound of each, the mass is the same, one pound. What you might have actually been thinking about was density. There would have to be a lot more feathers than bricks to equal one pound. But that's not what the question was asking. If you thought brick was the right answer, you were probably thinking of density, not mass. Density is a relationship of mass and volume. It's often written as grams per cubic centimeter or grams per liter. One gram per cubic centimeter is the same as a thousand grams per liter. And since gases have such low density, we use grams per liter instead of grams per cubic centimeter so that we have larger numbers to deal with. To calculate density, we use mass over volume. I remember this because it looks like the DMV and I just love going to the DMV. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Now, density is an intensive property, which means as long as you have the same substance, it will have the same density no matter how much of the substance you have. It depends only on the composition of the substance, not the size of the sample. So you could have a small gold coin or a large heavy gold bar. Both the coin and the bar have the same density. 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Now as temperature rises, volume increases, which makes the overall density decrease. Generally, density decreases as temperature increases, with a few exceptions to the rule, of course. The most important exception is water, but we'll talk more about that another time. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.